coming up on Live at 5. I just dropped everything I did and I just started crying. Local students mourn the loss of a classmate who was hit and killed this morning while on his way to school. We'll have the latest in the investigation. Plus, is your air filter inside your home and car protecting you from the wildfire smoke? Live at 5 starts now. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News, live at 5 in HD. Mike check one two, Mike check one two. It was a difficult thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Hey guys, I'm on IP4 now. Today. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, hello, hello. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News, live at 5. Coming up on Live at 5. I just dropped everything I did and I just started crying. Local students mourn the loss of a classmate who was hit and killed this morning while on his way to school. We'll have the latest in the investigation. Plus, is your air filter inside your home and car protecting you from the wildfire smoke? Live at 5 starts now. With coverage you can count on,
This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News, live at 5 in HD. A teen on his way to school was killed this morning on his bicycle when he was hit by a car. It happened on Browns Ferry Road just before 7. Police have not yet identified the victim. They tell us the teen was riding his bike to nearby Lookout Valley Middle and High School where he was an 11th grader. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Kate Smith is live from that area. And Kate, what has been done today to help the students deal with this tragedy? Well, it was a very difficult day for students as they learned of the death of one of their classmates. Counselors will remain at the school for students and staff as they try to comprehend this tragedy. Just after the morning Pledge of Allegiance, students at Lookout Valley Middle and High School received a painful announcement. Students and teachers stop everything you do and uh, there's a student that was in a tragic car accident and he is no longer with us. Derek Scott left school early. The heartbreaking news was too much for him to grasp. I was in band and I just dropped everything I did and I just started crying. They didn't have any classes together but Scott always looked up to the junior, a young man with a kind heart and a bright smile. I would always uh, call him like my cousin or my brother or something because we were so like connected and he was kind of like a brother to me. Friends say the student was one of a kind, someone everyone wanted to be around. There's something special about that kid. He always put a smile on my face. I always loved that kid. I always will. Police say the boy was crossing the highway when he was hit from behind. But officers are still investigating Wednesday's tragedy, trying to piece together exactly what happened. 7 o'clock this morning, it's still relatively dark. Uh, so I think it may have been lighting or something along those lines, but we don't know that. For now, the focus is on the loss of a beloved friend and student, someone whose smile will be deeply missed throughout the halls of Lookout Valley. How he always put a smile on his face, even if the day was rough and he'd always uh, talk to people, be friendly and all that. Families can contact the school's office or the counselors for help and assistance. Funeral arrangements are still pending. In Hamilton County, I'm Kate Smith, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kate. The female driver stopped immediately and is cooperating with police. Officers say speed and alcohol are not factors in this crash. Stay with Channel 3 for the latest in the investigation. Tennessee forestry crews say the three major wildfires in Hamilton County are staying within their containment lines. Those fires include Flippers Bend on Signal Mountain, also on Mowbray Mountain and on Poe Road. Officials say the Flippers Bend fire is at 1,000 acres, the Mowbray Mountain fire more than 800, and the Poe Road fire at about 650 acres. Now, officials tell us firefighters are having a hard time fighting the flames because there are several out-of-town crews that have to adapt to our rough terrain. The issue is, is that you have some folks here that aren't used to the terrain. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of rock, a lot of steep drops ar around there. So they're really having to watch their step. And, and, and there's also some uh, mine sh coal mine shafts. So they're really trying to look around. And, and those are some of the challenges that they're facing. In Georgia, there have been 24 new fires reported since yesterday. The major fires are in North Georgia, in North Georgia rather, are the 1600 acre Tatum Gulf wildfire in Dade County. The Rocky Face fire in Whitfield County has burned nearly 600 acres. And Georgia's largest fire is the Rough Ridge fire in the Cahada Wilderness area. It has burned 23,000 acres. Lookout Mountain residents returned to their homes today, three days after the wildfire forced them out over the weekend. Dozens had to leave their Lookout Highlands neighborhood, but they were allowed back this morning. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Cameron Taylor was there when residents arrived, and he joins us live with more. Cameron. David, since Sunday, neighbors have been staying with friends and family. Some spent the night inside their businesses, and at last check, that fire is 15% contained. And one reason why this has been 
a gradual process for crews is because of the terrain here on the Lookout Mountain. They say it's been an issue since day one, and they're asking people returning home tonight to stay alert in case this fire rekindles in any other areas. And this fire is expected to grow to 3,200 acres. That's double the size of what it is right now. And coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll talk with one couple who says they're glad to be back home, but they know that the wildfire could still be a threat. Live in Dade County, Cameron Taylor, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Cameron. New at 5, officials in McMinn County believe the fires in Calhoun are arson. Sheriff Joe Guy wrote in a Facebook post, our volunteer firefighters have been out all night and morning in the Calhoun area fighting these fires. It appears the wildfires were intentionally set. A burn ban remains in effect for McMinn County. Wildfire smoke can travel for miles. In some areas of Hamilton County, the air quality reached code red levels today, and that means the air was bad for all of us, including those who consider ourselves healthy. And it's also bad for the filters in our homes. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Natalie Potts is live with that part of the story. Natalie. Hey, David, well, we endure the smoke outside and that can be frustrating enough, right? Well, some are dealing with the smoke inside their homes. They just can't escape it. So here's what you can do to clean up the air. Jeff Cuthbertson knows all about clearing the air. Surf Pro Chattanooga often restores homes after a major flood or fire. Getting rid of that smoke smell can be tough. As much as possible, try to keep uh, you try to keep the outside air outside. In severe cases, this air scrubber or air filtration device can actually clean the air. It has a pre-filter and a HEPA filter for the small particles found in wildfire smoke. The deodorizing will, will neutralize the air. It will help get rid of the odor. If you're on a budget, changing your filter out will do some good too. First of all, you need to know uh, what type of filter you're buying. While some say clean air, that doesn't mean it can filter out smoke. There's very few that do that, and so you need to make sure that you get the right filter. The Filtrate Elite filter is one that will filter out smoke, and usually on the, the filter itself, it'll show the smoke if it filters out smoke. Make sure you check the label. Look for the word smoke before you buy it. You can grab high-performance filters for your vents, too, but don't wait to use them. If you can't smell or see the smoke, it doesn't mean the smoke particles are not there. Experts say those particles are just too small to detect or be filtered out by our lungs. Right now we're breathing in the, uh, the smoke is in the air, so now's a good time to filter it. And then you might want to go ahead and replace it once we get some rain, hopefully in the near future. Now remember, older adults, pregnant women, children, or anyone with a pre-existing respiratory condition like asthma is more likely to get sick under these conditions. If you have tightness of chest or shortness of breath, listen to your body. Don't hesitate. Contact your doctor. And officials say it's also a good time to check in with your elderly neighbors. Reporting in downtown Chattanooga, Natalie Potts, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Natalie. Well, let's get right to it. Paul Barris is at the Storm Alert Center to give us a look at the next few days and let us know if there's any hope ahead. Any hope, right. Well, a chance for any rain is slim. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything measurable, at least, uh, and meaningful. That's the most important word out of this, uh, meaningful. Saturday morning, we may see some brief showers. Let's take a look at the computer here. I want to show you which way the snow, smoke has been blowing today. Off of Walden's Ridge, it's been out over uh, the central and the eastern part. Uh, mainly the southern part of Hamilton County, a little bit of smoke, not as much. The big one is the Rough Ridge smoke, uh, uh, fire that's out over the western part of Fannin County. The smoke was really thick over uh, the Gilmer County area all the way down to Jasper, Georgia, that area, dark gray. And then even over uh, parts of uh, uh, Monroe County, all the way into Cherokee County, not too far from Unaka, there's been some pretty good smoke. And even some smoke still out in the Polk County. Now the winds are going to shift tomorrow because the winds have been lighting out of the north today. They're going to be shifting out of the west to southwest. So it's going to be blowing that smoke out towards the mountains of North Carolina once again. And still out over Fannin County, Polk County, you're going to see some of that smoke too uh, for tomorrow. And probably southern part of Hamilton County be better off, but the northern part of Hamilton County could see some of that smoke for tomorrow. So that's the way things are standing right now. The chance for rain slim again. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, but the big news is the winds are really going to be picking up, especially on Saturday. We'll tell you about that and the whole seven days coming up. Thank you, Paul. New at 5, a Minnesota police officer is charged with second-degree manslaughter in the killing of a black man in a St. Paul suburb. 
Prosecutors made that announcement earlier today. Police officer Geronimo Yanez fatally shot Philando Castile in a traffic stop in July. The shooting's gruesome aftermath was streamed live on Facebook by Castile's girlfriend, who was with him in the car along with her young daughter. The woman said Castile was shot several times while reaching for his ID after telling the officer he had a gun permit and was armed. Oklahoma City police have identified the gunman responsible for a deadly shooting outside the main terminal of Will Rogers World Airport. The suspected gunman, 45-year-old Lloyd Bowie, was a former employee of Southwest Airlines who had resigned in April 2015. According to authorities, Bowie was found dead inside his pickup truck located at the airport with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. The victim, 52-year-old Michael Winchester, the father of an NFL player, was also an employee at Southwest. It's still unclear what the motive was for the shooting or if the suspect intended to target other Southwest employees. Also new tonight, one person has been injured in an industrial accident at the Nissan manufacturing plant in Smyrna. That's in Middle Tennessee. Rutherford County officials confirmed the accident happened around 1030 this morning. A medical helicopter was called to the scene to take the victim to the hospital. Stay with Channel 3. We'll continue to keep you updated on this. Without separation, their future wasn't very good. It took 18 hours, but doctors in Tennessee have successfully separated conjoined twins. More details coming up after the break. Eyewitness News Traffic, sponsored by CHI Memorial. Channel 3 Eyewitness News Traffic, sponsored by CHI Memorial Convenient Care. No matter how minor the emergency, we provide trusted urgent care for every bump, bruise, cold, or cough. Now in Cleveland and Signal Mountain. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. There are a few accidents to watch out for. One of those on Dayton Boulevard at Morris Springs. Chattanooga Police also clearing Northmore at Montview and one on Ocoee at Dodson. Might find yourself in some heavy rush hour traffic if your commute takes you I-24 eastbound of view traffic there. Germantown as traffic makes its way through the ridge cut to that 75 split. You're looking at about a 12 to 14 minute commute from downtown to that 75 split on 24 east. From the US 101 Information Center, it's Mo with your Eyewitness News traffic. Pretty picture here looking out towards the west uh, from our GPS cam. Look out mountain off to the left here as the sun starts to go down in the west. And we had bluer skies, at least in Hamilton County. Uh, the real thick smoke was out over the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. Good news for tomorrow's air quality should be moderate, not even in the orange. That's a lot. That's the best we've seen in a long, long time. But depending on where you go will mean exactly. It depends exactly where the fires are and where you are 
and what the wind is uh, coming up for. It's a mile, and the wind's going to be more out of the south to southwest, so it's going to be blowing into the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains, it looks like now, of uh, North Carolina, Georgia, and possibly north of, uh, north of uh, Saudi Daisy, and all maybe up to Ray County, too, some of the fires up there. As far as any rain goes, there's just nothing around here. High pressure still continues sitting over the Tennessee Valley, currently at 72. Winds lighting out of the southwest, 73. Right now in Dalton, 74 Athens, 59 already down at the Murphy Andrews Airport. 73, 38 the high and the low uh, for today, about 20 inches below normal in rain. 75 in Trenton, 74 Dalton and Calhoun. We had 70 in Chatsworth, 68 LJ, where there's a lot of smoke today. 73 Ottawa to 73 in Dunlap, 74 right here at Channel 3, Red Bank. 72, while well, it was 69 up in Riceville, a pleasant 72 in Delano, it was 69. Downtown Murphy, 64 out near Turtletown for a high, with 71 Athens, also in the Dayton and Pikeville at 73, while uh, Jasper was 73, the uh, Colmont about 68. Latest Vipercast again shows that high pressure pushing off towards the east, this is what we were thinking. And the winds are going to be coming out of the south tomorrow, not too strong, but south to southwest for tomorrow. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, the winds will start to lighten up a little bit, and they're really not going to be that strong for tomorrow. But this is Friday morning. The winds are going to be out of the south, then they're going to pick up in the afternoon. That's what these arrows are indicating. And then the winds are going to shift coming up into Saturday morning as we see some showers come by early Saturday morning by 11 o'clock Saturday night. Completely dry once again. Winds very strong out of the Blue Ridge Mountains and still out of the northwest. Overnight Saturday night, they'll die down, and by Sunday morning, they'll be pretty light once again. We may see, we may see a tenth of an inch of rain in a few spots. I don't think it's going to be widespread, but you got a chance for at least a tenth of an inch or less. I don't think you get much more than that anywhere. Signal Mountain tomorrow, 73, a dry day, lots of sun, light southwesterly winds. Look out, Mountain, you'll hit 74. No records tomorrow, but it's going to get close for the next few days after that. Tonight, 44 with clear skies, a little bit of smoke and haze in a few spots, especially real close to those fires with the lighter winds. 78 tomorrow, again, light winds, mainly out of the south, though, and then 47 tomorrow night with pretty much clear skies. Seven-day forecast, 78 on Friday, getting a lot closer to a record. I think the record Friday is 79, so that's going to be close. It'll be a bit breezy. The winds will really pick up, though, on Saturday with a 20% chance for a shower, then cooler weather with some freezing conditions in many, many places, maybe even downtown, with temperatures at around 32 or so coming up Sunday and Monday mornings. High temperatures coming up on Sunday, 53 in the plateau. The highs will only be in the 40s. So it's going to be awfully cold this weekend, especially Sunday. All right, we'll keep that in mind. Thank yeah. you, Paul. Well, still ahead, a singer who started his career here in the scenic city returns home. We love it when he does. We'll tell you where you can see James Rogers perform up next.
Can you believe almost three decades James Rogers performed in Pigeon Forge at places like Dollywood, Music Mansion, and Silver Dollar City, but he never forgot his Chattanooga and North Georgia roots or his friends. We were fortunate enough to see him at some of those venues, sold out and satisfied crowds. Well, he'll be performing tomorrow night here in Chattanooga for a very special cause. And our friend Barry Corder with the Chattanooga Times Free Press has the scoop on where we can see James. How about it, Barry? Yeah, exactly. Our friend James is, uh, he, he made his mark here three and a half decades ago playing at uh, the Light Fantastic and then the Station House at the Choo Choo. Went on to Pigeon Forge and uh, had a great career up there, voted best entertainer many, many times and, and brought a lot of people in. Uh, did a lot of songs for the National Guard, uh, the Fraternal Order, Order of the Eagles with Fly Eagle Fly. Um, got close to his retirement age and came back home and for about the last decade was doing a Christmas special down at the Colonnade. This year he decided he wanted to do something along those lines but for a nice cause. So tomorrow night he'll be at the Alhambra Shriners Auditorium uh, doing essentially that same show but the money will go towards the hospital for kids. Um, he won't be doing, people should realize, he won't be doing the show at the Colonnade. This replaces that, but uh, like I said, it's for a great cause. It's something he told me that, is, that he really wants to do, uh, help those kids. Well, and it's a blessing for those of us who are closer to the Alhambra Shrine uh, venue as opposed to the Colonnade. Uh, you know, that's in Catoosa County, and it's been a great performance center for James the last several years. So uh, how do we get tickets for tomorrow night's show? Yeah, you're right. He's not leaving the colony because it didn't do well. It did great. Uh, the, the Shriners Auditorium is over on, in East Brainerd. Uh, it's $20 to get in. You can buy tickets uh, that night at the office or you can probably get, go by, uh, you know, tomorrow and get some. But it uh, starts at 7 o'clock and he will be doing some Christmas and there will be an eagle there. <laughs> That's a tradition Good. we look forward to. We were to. hoping that would not be left out. Well, Thank you, Barry. James is a hard-working entertainer. Barry's a hard-working reporter. You can read more in tomorrow's Chattanooga Times Free Press. Well, Tennessee surgeons have separated conjoined twins from Nigeria. A spokeswoman for Le Bonheur Children's Hospital in Memphis said the twins were separated during an 18-hour procedure on November 7th and 8th. Their names are Miracle and Testimony Ayini. The girls were conjoined at the lower half of their body. Doctors said their condition was extremely rare, occurring in one out of every five million births. Doctors credited teamwork, preparation, and the girls' parents, whom they called faith warriors, for the successful outcome. To get to that point, they needed a few things. They needed a great surgical team, which we have here, a supportive hospital, which we have led by Mary Armour, and faith and they had abundance of faith. And the family has another reason to celebrate. Today's the girl's first birthday, November 16th. Mm. And we've been looking at those pictures all day. Oh, Beautiful. To see those faces, yeah. Coming up, a curious cat has gone viral. You'll see what caused <laughs> the cat to get into a tight spot when we come back.
A curious cat is becoming famous for getting stuck in a tight spot. A cat in Australia had to be rescued from a shower drain. Its head stuck in the tile bathroom floor. You know what they say about curiosity in cats it usually doesn't mm. have a happy ending. But the rescuers removed the drainage socket from the floor to make Kiba the cat more comfortable before using tools to free Kiba from the drain. Once free, Kiba was returned to a grateful <laughs> owner. A, a little less for the wear there. Yeah. Yeah, there Ke you see when its head was stuck. Kiba Yikes. may have learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like me when I get up in the morning. Oh, <laughs> well, right now for that matter. Hey, we want to thank you for watching Eyewitness News Live at 5. Now here's a look at what's coming up at 5.30. Ahead on Channel 3, Eyewitness News Live at 5.30. We're taking a look at the number of wildfires in our viewing area that have been intentionally set. Here in Sequatchie County, this is the damage left by a small wildfire that the sheriff's office says started when a man lit a cigarette threw it into a pile of leaves, and then watched it burn. Kelly McCarthy has more when Greg Glover joins Cindy for Live at 5.30, right after this. Channel 3 Eyewitness News, live at 5.